Hello learners. This video talks about all the aquatic ecosystems on Earth. So without further ado, let's start with the video. So let's begin with first, what is an aquatic ecosystem? Aquatic ecosystems are basically any ecosystem which consists of a water body. The water body could be various types like ponds, lakes, rivers, streams, oceans, you name it. But basically it can be divided into two main types. The first one is your marine and the second one is a freshwater ecosystem. The following diagram shows what a marine ecosystem looks like. It consists of various parts starting with the water of course. The water is also divided into various parts like the topmost portion where the sunlight reaches very easily and then that is the bottommost portion where there is much less penetration of sunlight and then there is the shore which is more or less nearby the land and also pretty transitional zones in between where different kinds of organisms can co-inhabit together. So we'll all learn about these in, a, in the further slides. The first type of our aquatic ecosystem is a marine ecosystem. Marine ecosystems are supposed to be one of the world's most biggest ecosystems covering around 71% of the Earth's surface area and it has 97% of our planet's water. It contains a lot of organisms and along with the organisms there is a lot of dissolved minerals and salts also contained in the marine ecosystem. Marine ecosystem examples are your open oceans, the ocean floor ecosystems, the profundal zone of the oceans, the benthic bottom of the oceans, intertidal zones, estuaries, coral reefs, salt marshes, mangrove forests, as well as hydrothermal vents. Hydrothermal vents are these deep ocean vents where some particular chemosynthetic bacteria can only survive. The given diagram depicts a marine ecosystem there, which can be divided into basic two types. The first one is photic zone and the second one is your aphotic zone. So Photic zone is the zone till where the sunlight can reach into the ocean and a photic zones are those zones where there is no penetration of sunlight. The abyssal zone is where there is a region of total darkness. Then there is something called the pelagic zone. This is the region of open water or open ocean. Then there is something called a continental shelf which is very nearby the land and then there is an intertidal zone which is the zone of the difference between the high tide and the low tide there is a neuritic zone which is very much near to the coast and the ocean zone also called the open ocean zone which is home to thousands of zooplanktons and phytoplanktons which make up for the basis of all marine food chains and the benthic zone which is kind of the ocean floor the ocean floor consists of organisms uh, that are crawlers or the bottom dwellers and all of these organisms existing in the various parts of an uh, of a marine ecosystem are in harmony with each other and this as you can see is an example of a hydrothermal vent where even the chemosynthetic bacteria can survive the next type of aquatic ecosystem is your freshwater ecosystem so contrary to your marine ecosystem the freshwater ecosystem covers a very less part that is only 0.8 percent of the earth's surface area and also contains very less of the amount of water 0.009 percent and this can also be of three types the first one is lentic or slow moving water bodies like your pools lakes or ponds and the second one is lotic water bodies lotic water bodies are your fast moving water bodies like rivers and streams and the third one is your wetland wetlands are those areas which are usually dry but they are wet for a considerable amount of time this diagram depicts um, ponds and lakes 
which is an example of your freshwater ecosystem. As you can see, even over here, there is something called a limnetic zone, limnetic zone as well as a littoral zone. Once again, what is a littoral zone? Littoral zone is the area of shallow water and it absorbs maximum amount of sunlight and uh, consists of a diverse community. Um, and all of the eggs and larvae of aquatic organisms are usually found in the littoral zone. It also consists of various animals. It houses various animals like your snakes, turtles, ducks, etc. And the limnetic zone is the open surface water, which is well lighted. And predominantly the planktons and fishes are found in the limnetic zone. Then comes your profundal zone or the aphotic zone. Aphotic means there is no light reaching up to this surface. Thus, this region is cold and dense and very little light also reaches this area. Thus, only the decomposers are found in this region. Um, this region is the photic zone. Till here, the sunlight can reach. And then there is the benthic zone. Uh, or the ocean bottom very little organisms are found in this area and it is basically consisting of your scavengers and decomposers so whatever uh, organisms die it falls into the ocean bottom and the decomposers and scavengers feed on them and various crustaceans protozoa etc are also found in this region now there is also another type of ecosystem called artificial or human made ecosystems. These are all the ecosystems that are maintained artificially or even made by human beings by the addition of energy and by plan manipulation. Thus there is a natural balance which is being disturbed in regular intervals. A very good example is your cropland where human beings cultivate their own crops according to their own requirements and uh, get harvested from harvests from them then there are also examples of orchards aquariums gardens etc where all all of us are trying to control the biotic community along with its physical chemical environment so this is an example of your artificial ecosystem and now a very important concept the ecosystem boundary so firstly ecosystems are appearing to be distinct from each other with time and space but functionally each ecosystem is linked with each other no ecosystem can exist alone there are always uh, contact between adjacent ecosystems there exists no functional boundaries between the ecosystems because ecosystems near to each other or adjacent to each other are always interacting with each other in order to function the adjacent aquatic and land ecosystem may have many common organisms for example birds and there is a constant exchange of inorganic nutrients also between them for example sea birds bring in the element of phosphorus from sea to land in the form of the bird droppings that is also known as gyanum this is a part of your phosphorus cycle now the boundaries of ecosystems kind of overlap and this overlapping area is also known as the transition zone which is known as the ecotone so ecotone is the region where the boundaries of two or more ecosystems can intermingle with each other and ecotones have communities that are common to both ecosystems and they are sometimes uh, found to have even more densely populated plants and animals than in either of the communities so uh, this thing is also known as your edge effect edge effect means the boundaries of ecosystem contain even more amount of organisms than both the ecosystems contain separately